Hey everybody, I'm Amy. It's time for another Tuesday tip. This week, I want to look at cholesterol from a different angle, not cardiovascular disease, but actually depression. So there are depression studies around cholesterol levels, both at the high and low end of the spectrum. One study that I'm looking at currently, uh, it's entitled LDL cholesterol relates to depression, its severity, and the perspective course. So in this study, people diagnosed with major depressive disorder who were in an active major depressive episode were studied relative to a control group who was not diagnosed with major depression and not in a depressive episode. Overall, they found higher levels of LDL cholesterol and LDL to HDL ratio in patients with a current depressive episode than in healthy control subjects. Also, they found that the higher the level, the worse the outcome for the person with depression. So what that means is lipids are somehow a contributor to major depression, whether that means they're a causative factor or a reactionary factor, like your brain is trying to protect itself when it has depression with higher lipids, we don't know, right? But there is some association there. There have also been a number of studies showing that low cholesterol levels, right? So pathologically low cholesterol levels has been in, uh, implicated with depression, suicidality, uh, impulsivity, and homicidality, which is not so good. We don't want those things. So obviously there is some link between mental health and depression, but at this moment, it's really unclear. And actually, I feel like every Tuesday tip this month has been me saying cholesterol, something, 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 is really unclear. So sorry about that. <laughs> but it's the truth, right? The information is very mixed, data is very mixed, and I honestly think what it boils down to is that we do not fully understand the physiology of cholesterol. We don't yet fully understand the function. Once we understand the functions of cholesterol, of which there's probably 20 or 30, right? Once we fully understand the function, the purpose, and why we regulate it so tightly, then I think we will have a better idea of what we're actually doing with trying to manage it. Okay, Tuesday, not so much a tip. Tuesday, food for thought. Bye, guys.